All right. Hello, everyone. It's been so long since nag ano ako, market analysis. So sa mga bagong subscriber natin, thank you. And also for the people who have been waiting for my analysis lately, I'm sorry, been out, been focusing on other things. Although I still do my trades, I just been focused on my Ever since nangyari yung quarantine na to, a lot of things have changed. And especially yung market, sobrang gulo dahil sa quarantine. So here's some things na I waited before mag-analyze mag with all market. Kasi nung fresh pa yung COVID news, talaga ang gulo ng market. And sobrang gulo. Ngayon, since everyone's starting to adjust on it, na parang, because the whole world's involved, so kailangan the world has to adjust. I can start to see some good patterns in the market. And with that, mas madaling i-analyze yung market kung ganun. So today, I'm gonna talk about what's gonna happen this whole week. I said, we have a lot of interesting news coming up this week. With a lot of big news coming up, it means a lot of liquidity in the market. Liquidity means opportunity. And also, pag kasi malaki mga movement sa market, masarap kumita ng maganda, right? <laughs> Madaling i-hit yung mga TP goal natin or yung mga cash goal, your pips. So let's get started. Monday, today, the only big news we have is Canada. We're gonna have a business outlook mamayang gabi at 10.30 p.m. So it could make a difference depending on what's gonna say on that meeting. Pero this week, we're gonna, it's gonna be pretty interesting for Canada. I'll tell you more about that later. And as you can see, bank holidays sa China, which means uh, pagka bank holidays sa China, that's a pretty big economy playing in the forex market. Uh, we're, we may not see that much movements, but we will see when the European markets open and the U.S. market open. So Tuesday, ito interesting, AUD, cash rate. Ngayon, um, from, what I, from my research so far, since they've already been cutting rates sa mga previous months, previous weeks, and my emergency cut rate na yan, I doubt they're gonna cut any lower than 0.25 and that's the lowest in their history of RBA so far. So tomorrow, if they're not gonna cut the rate, most likely, makakaroon tayo ng mga, mga, mga buyers sa AUD, mga sasakay na buyers. Okay? And it's a very good opportunity for some buying position. Okay? And let's see, Wednesday, uh, we're going to have OPEC meetings at the oil company. Na that's going to take a big effect on Canada. Because um, Canada is very reliant on oil. It is a, a commodity-based currency. So kung mga bad news sa oil definitely affected yung Canadian dollar. So definitely going to keep a close eye on what's going to happen here. Kung yung mapag-uusapan nila. Kasi right now, you know, we're having an oil war between Russia and ano, the Middle East. And they're going to try to balance it out kung mag-agree ba sila sa cutting the oil production or are they going to cut or not? Hindi natin alam. Kasi the more they produce, the lower the price. So, so though makialam ni Trump in the middle, he wants to be the middleman to like settle the kung ano magiging tamang pressure for the whole world. So the oil can either become, it might go up or it may stay down. We don't know until the meeting is over. So definitely big effect on Canada dyan. And Thursday, look, unemployment and employment change sa Canada. And we have US Core PPI. Definitely yung mga ganyang ano, this is a big effect on Canada. Kaya before I trade any Canadian um, dollar this week against any other currency, I may have to wait what happens in the sa may OPEC meeting na to. So pag ng ang meeting na to, maybe I'll trade Thursday night after ng unemployment change na to. Kasi a lot of big um, traders also, like big banks, mga investment companies, they wait until ma-measure nila. Yung tatansyay muna nila yung mga malaking news and from depending on what data comes out, then they can decide whether they're gonna buy or sell a certain currency. Kaya most likely, magkatrade ako ng Canadian dollar sa Thursday after ng mga news na to. Kasi Friday, the only news we have is USD and we have bank holiday na ng Canada so we're not gonna see much action. Same thing with AUD and NZD. Alright? Now, let's go to the chart that, that I covered up the calendar. Tingnan natin naman yung chart. So as you can see, ladies and gentlemen, um, 
Tatan yung mga tinetrick yung currency lately. They're all GBP pairs. And the reason for that is ang lalaki ng mga market movements. Like, for example, tinamo from the support to pivot point, 170 pips. Ay, ang sarap kumita sa ganyan. Tinatan yung resistance. Boom. Kasi tinamo, mahit niya lang yung support dito. And then it goes up here. 100 pips just like that. This is good kung medyo malaki account mo. Kung malit ang account na trade mo rito, I suggest very use minimal, as in minimal na risk lang. Kasi since there's a lot of big, big movements and if it does go against you and malaki taya mo, pwede kang kainin. Kaya when it comes to trading to high volume currencies like GBP, definitely, you know, take the safe side. You know, trading is not always about winning, it's about survival too. <laughs> Kaya, most people, they win in the beginning, but they don't last a lifetime kasi they either burn their account even before one year, most new traders. And those people na hindi pa nila nag system, they don't last long kasi they think Forex is super easy, which isn't. Maybe at the moment na nag-start ka, madali siya kasi maganda yung flow ng market. The moment the market goes crazy, a lot of people lose accounts. Kaya, something to keep in mind. So, let's take a look at GBP USD. Kung na-reach na niya yung mga first... Oh, wala pa siya na-reach na support and resistance. And by the way, the um, what I'm using here on the trend is a 200 EMA. Very accurate siya kasi whenever the chart touches it, it's either gonna bounce from it or gonna go through it. It really depends on the fundamental news. Kaya, I used to be pure technical na talagang pure chart lang ako pero you know if you want to become you know if you want to get to the actual professional side you got to learn to understand how to read news you got to learn how to decipher yung mga lumalabas na news kung credible news ba yan or is it fake news kaya maraming ang saying in trading na buy the rumor sell the news don't always believe what's on the news so you got to determine kung ang news ba it will be good or bad for the currency. Just because it's a negative data doesn't mean yung currency na yun is babagsak or tataas. It really depends. But anyways, so let's look at um, GVP JPY. Alright, mukhang na-hit na kaninang maga na pagbukas ng market. Pero almost hit the first support, then tumast siya. Huh. Okay. The only downside about sa first thing in the morning, trading yung sa may broker ko na USGFX ang lalaki ng spread kasi floating yung spread niya usually when the market opens the spread so high na we're talking about sometimes over 10 pips yung spread niya and that's way too much kaya I don't like to trade way early in the morning I wait until mag hit yung mga 8 pero depende na rin niya sa broker niyo so as you can see may up oh GBP US AUD oh na hit na niya kanina oh yung daily S2 Profit na, sa, profit na sana ng 109 kung naabutan ko lang to. Pero marami sa inyo nagtatanong from what I read from the comments so hindi ako nakapag-reply kasi I'm more focused on just my trades and I'm basically doing this YouTube videos just to share the knowledge naman. Okay? You know, I'm not getting paid to do this. this I'm just giving my time back to the community. Kaya, you know, I'm not really obligated to make any videos for anybody or answer any questions. You know, I tried, you know, to answer questions through making videos. And my only people who are asking, you know, what kind of trader am I? I'm actually both daily and, you know, swing trader. But at the moment, I rather focus on swing kasi less stress pagka hindi ka nakatutok sa market. Ang masarap sa swing kasi eh, you know, once you understand where the market is going for the whole week, mag place ka lang ng buy or sell, that's it. You don't have to look at the chart. Mag-set ka lang ng TP mo. Like, let's say, okay, I want to hit 100 pips. Mag-set ka lang nun. By the time, by the end of the week, i-check mo na, boom, kumita ka na. Kasi pagka daily trading, medyo stressful. Eh. You're more on the technical side. And talagang nagre-rely ka sa mga market movement, sa mga price action ng mga chart. Uh, the lowest I usually go is just H1, one hour candles. But if I'm swinging, I'm using H4 and above. Most of the time, daily or weekly. But H4 is the lowest I will go pagka nagsiswing ako. Ngayon, sa mga viewers natin, you guys can either follow my trade. It's up to you. But make sure you have your own risk management. Always have 
ano, um, stop loss kung hindi ka siya sure sa trade mo. As for me, I don't use stop loss kasi since I'm doing fundamentals, I know there's a high chance that it will go to my direction. And tsaka hindi naman ganun kalakihan yung nire-risk ko. Kaya if it does go the other way, I can cut loss naman. Okay? So that's it for now. Maybe I might post more videos this coming week depending kung makita kong mga other opportunities or if I day trade, I might make another video. And also, kung sa mga tao na gusto makisabay sa akin, uh, just join our our Facebook page. Meron akong group doon. It's a private group and you guys can just join it. I'll put it down in the description down below sa video na to. And then you guys can just answer the questions honestly that they ask you. Kasi pinifilter ako yung who's in that group. You know, I don't just accept anybody in that group. Kasi I know there's a lot of scammers out there na who's trying to sell EA or investment. Uh, yung group na to is purely trading. Kaya I usually kick out anybody who's trying to promote investment or ano, yung mga electronic assistant. Kasi that's not really trading. You, you, you know, you're using a robot to trade for you. The point of trading is to enhance your own skills. Kasi trading is not something that you get in a month. Mag-aral ka man sa isang class, magbayad ka man ng mamahaling seminar. You will not master trading in a short amount of time. It really takes times. It takes months, years, until you get the hang of it. And plus, palagi nagbabago ang market. Kaya it's a lifetime commitment if you're going to be a trader. It's not something na mag-jump ka lang and then expect to make music and then get out. No. Yeah, you can can happen kung suswertehin ka, feeling lucky, kasi sometimes nagiging sugal nga to sa maraming tao, sometimes they jump in, kumita ng malaki, and then they pull out, and then there are those, kumita ng malaki, and they wanna make more, they end up burning their account, and they also be, ends up being in debt. And you don't want that. Because trading, it's a, it's a skill that you have to hone throughout the rest of your life. And, but usually, most traders retire early. <laughs> I say, um, Number one thing is the stress level since you are handling your own money and a lot of traders uh, pretty much ang inahandle nila is yung sarili nilang life savings account which is a very dangerous I know I say you know you always have to have your money in different places I say if one investment fails you got to have a backup and especially in trading trading is a very dangerous game if you don't know what you're doing you could lose your money just like that in an instant at ko na lahat yun I, uh, I've learned a lot of lesson. So that's it for now, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for watching. Hope everybody's having a profitable Monday. All right. Take care.